So I feel like most people know the basic mistakes of coming to Vegas, taking taxis, spending money at overpriced hotel convenience stores, and not leaving your wife at home. But today, whoa, 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 why'd you stop, why, why'd you stop recording? Leaving your wife at home, Zach? Seriously? Sorry, sorry, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I swear, I swear, I'll just, I'll take it out the video. Okay, so maybe not that last one, but today I got 12 beginner mistakes that everybody makes when they visit this place. And if you follow these rules, I think your Vegas experience is going to be significantly better. The first mistake beginners make is getting Fat Tuesdays. This is by far one of the worst drinks in Las Vegas because it's just a 200 ounce Slurpee from 7-Eleven with the most minuscule amount of alcohol in it. And really, at best case drinking these, you're just hoping to get a sugar high. I want you to please promise me you will not get a Fat Tuesday and instead you will go to the Taco Bell Cantina and you will get a twisted freeze instead. They have significantly better flavor options, better alcohol to slurpee ratio. I'm pretty sure they're cheaper. The vibe in Taco Bell Cantina is better. They taste better. And you also don't have to look like a complete idiot walking around with your obnoxious Fat Tuesday cup. The second mistake people make is not gambling. Hear me out. I know some people come to Vegas and they don't gamble. They think it's immoral. They think it's a bad thing to get into, but it could be a fun activity if you treat it like an experience, not like you're trying to get a second source of income for the weekend. As a local, I like to think about it like this. If you were to take $100 to an arcade and have fun, just play a bunch of random games, your $100 is gone. All gambling is really is an adult arcade. It's about the playing games part. You're playing games with your friends and the excitement is the rush of potentially winning some money from it. Honestly, my recommendation is to bring a set amount of money that you're okay with losing completely. Even if it's just like a hundred bucks, even if it's 50 bucks, there's a lot of places in Vegas where you can gamble for super cheap. Where people get themselves into trouble is if they come here actually trying to win money. And the majority of people are just not going to do that. If you treat it like an experience, if you treat it like you're just playing games, it can be fun. That being said, the third biggest mistake people make is people thinking that they're smarter than the casinos. Trust me, that roulette strategy you've seen on YouTube is complete bullshit. I'm sorry to tell you that. You're not coming to Vegas hitting a lick off the casinos off some dumb strategy you've seen on the internet. These casinos make millions and millions and millions of dollars a month for a reason. You're not gonna beat them at their own game, especially if you're playing games like roulette that have some of the biggest house edges in Vegas. Come, play, have fun, hope you get lucky. That's the fun part of gambling and then move on with your life. Fourth biggest mistake, and this kind of all ties in, is not learning how to play craps. This, in my opinion, is the absolute most fun way to gamble. It's probably one of the only ways to gamble where everybody in theory can win together. You guys need money? I am literally making every single person at this table money. I don't know, we said we weren't gonna gamble. Come on. What's the worst that could happen? It may look a little bit complicated, but honestly, you watch a five minute YouTube video, you will be up to par. On New Year's Eve, I was actually on the strip trying to kill some time. I walk into Casino Royale, playing bubble craps, dollar minimums, nothing crazy. I end up getting on a hot streak. I'm probably up 20, 30 bucks. I'm literally just killing time for the fireworks to start. People across the table from me come visiting from the other side of the country. They're up two, 300 bucks, high-fiving me, cheering for me, buying me drinks. There's literally no other table game that's gonna be like that. And just the, the idea of winning money with random people and everybody is rooting for you and cheering for you, is just a fun environment to be in. Fifth biggest mistake that people make when they come here is getting weak ass fast food. Why are you coming all the way to Vegas to get Chipotle or Panda or Chick-fil-A or Popeyes? You can get that shit anytime you want when you're back home. Why not try some local spots? Why not try something that you're never gonna be able to try anywhere else? Like instead of going to Popeyes down here, there's a cool place right across the street in the Venetian called Black Tap. It's a really cool spot. They have a ton of unique things, a ton of things that you're not gonna be able to get anywhere else. Go try these places. I just don't understand why anybody would just get some basic food that they can get anywhere. Try something new and try something that's unique to Vegas. The sixth biggest mistake people make is take taking pictures in front of the Las Vegas sign. This is kind of like one of the most cliche picture spots, but to be honest, if you have to wait any more than like 10, 15 minutes to take a picture here, it's not worth it. There's so many cooler different photography spots around Vegas. Now, if you are desperate to get a picture in front of the sign and like that's the only thing you dream of, go super early in the morning. Sun rises here at like 5.30 or six o'clock. So at least try to beat the crowd. If you're gonna not show up at this spot until like 10 a.m. or 11 a.m., you're literally gonna have to wait an hour to take a picture at a very mundane spot. The seventh biggest mistake that people make, and this one's for all the sports fans out there, but overpaying for tickets. If you're coming here, especially for an NFL game at Allegiant Stadium, there is zero reason why you should be buying your tickets three, four, five months in advance. If you do, you're absolutely just wasting money. NFL schedule release is actually on Thursday. As soon as they release the schedule, they're gonna start putting out tickets and you're gonna see how expensive ticket prices here. And I've seen before people try to book their tickets when they book their trips 
three, four months in advance, you're probably gonna be spending two or three times as much as you would if you just waited until the week of the game. As a local, I'm a diehard Raider fan, unfortunately, but the way you get the cheapest tickets is just to wait to the week of the game. They're not gonna sell out. This is not like EDM or some type of concert or festival that people come to here. Typically, I start browsing the week of the game and really, I don't even buy until like Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, even if the game is on a Sunday. The eighth biggest mistake people make is overpaying for drinks at these games. If you go to T-Mobile Arena or Allegiant Stadium, you're likely gonna be paying $18 a drink. Personally, as somebody that doesn't drink that much, spending $18 on a drink is super excessive, but you can actually just go to an ABC store, Walgreens, or wherever else. You can get like two shots for $3, put them in your pocket, and just and just kind of walk in. I've done it a few times at different events at T-Mobile and it's, you know, it's just not like they're gonna cavity search you if you're walking in with a couple of shots of alcohol. I've never had an issue with it. I'm not advocating for this, I'm just saying. You could easily spend 80 to 100 bucks on alcohol in there. But you know, if you're cool with just taking a couple of shots, could've just saved you 80 bucks. Ninth biggest mistake that people make when they come to Vegas is bringing kids in strollers. Look, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is just not the place for kids. There's just too much going on, there's nothing for them to do, and it does kind of seem like a barrier preventing parents from doing things that, you know, they could be doing without their kids. Personally, I feel like if I had kids and I still wanted the Vegas experience, I would go off the strip somewhere. There's a lot of cool places to be in Summerlin, Red Rock, uh, Green Valley Ranch, the M Resort. These are more low-key places. They're gonna be far less hectic. You could still gamble, you could still drink, can still play all your fun casino games. Red Rock is right next to the Summerlin Mall, which is right next to the Aviator Stadium. But pushing your stroller around on the Strip or Fremont Street, it just seems like hell. Number 10 is walking everywhere. If you've never been here before, I understand how it's cool to walk around all over. Great, awesome. It can get old pretty quickly. The Strip is not a very small place. Uh, I believe it's like three Four. miles long, at least from like Treasure Island to the MGM, but there are free trams that you can ride. If you're going to like Allegiant Stadium, especially, you gotta walk over to the Mandalay Bay, which is like a 15 minute walk, even from Excalibur. You can also hop on the free tram, ride it over, save yourself a little walk. I believe there's also one that goes from like the Mirage to like Aria or Cosmo. You can actually even hop on a train, which I think this one might be paid. I'll put the information here, but you can hop on like a little tram from MGM or like Top Golf all the way to the Westgate, which if you did that walk would be like 45 minutes to an hour. The west side of the strip does have the free trams, so if you're there, don't feel like walking a whole lot. Take advantage of those, they're free. 11th biggest mistake that people make in Vegas is arguing with the religious people. I don't know how often they are out here, but every now and then when there is a big event, New Year's for example, you got the people with their microphones and big signs telling everybody that they're gonna go to hell. And with them doing that, it oftentimes draws a crowd who wants to argue against them. Look, it's a cult, you're not changing their mind. They're probably not gonna change your mind about anything. You're gonna be shouting at them. They got megaphones. It is a giant lose-lose situation. Vegas is supposed to be a very fun and happy place to enjoy your time, to enjoy your weekend. Why do you wanna waste any part of it trying to argue with these people? You are literally not gonna get anything out of it and you're just gonna be wasting your time. So yeah, definitely just walk past them, ignore them, and just focus on making the most out of your own trip. 12th biggest mistake that people make here, taking kids to the Pinball Hall of Fame. Now, I got a little beef with this place because I was disrespected about a year ago when I went there, but upon reading their Google reviews, turns out that I'm not a psychopath after all. The dude who runs it and one of the ladies managers there that yelled at me for some dumb shit are really not nice people. If you go there, you're really supposed to treat it like a museum, not a fun arcade. And you could only imagine if you take a six year old kid there who is filled around all these old and fun games, how could they possibly not be excited? Even I was excited until that <laughs> yelled at me. I just think the thought of a tourist, someone who's never been to Vegas coming here before with their little kid and you wanna take them to have a great time and then you just get kind of disrespected in there. I feel like that would completely kill the whole mood of your day. And then the last thing on our list is sleeping on the Las Vegas Aces games. I think these WNBA games in Vegas are probably one of the best values for entertainment in the entire city. If you think about it, it's 10 bucks for a ticket and then you sprinkle a little bit of money on the game to watch some high quality basketball. Aces team is dope. Kelsey Plum, one of the best players in the league with Asia Wilson. I think the season is about to tip off here in like June, but like I'm just 
just saying. If you are a sports fan, you could bet on basically all the games, except you can't bet on Aces games at the Mandalay Bay because they play there a little bit of a conflict of interest. You'd have to place your bet at another casino. Betting on sports is fun. Betting on sports when you're there live, though, it's like a whole nother level. But yeah, those are the 13 biggest mistakes that I think people make when they come to Vegas. If you have any of your own, drop them in the comments down below. But I don't want no cliche stuff. We all know that you should bring shoes that are comfortable to walk in. We all know you shouldn't take taxis. We know that stuff. But what are some more low-key mis- Oh, shit. There's a fucking cricket right there. How am I supposed to get back to my car? Fuck out of here.